Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Total War Warhammer 2. So we've taken over the Shrine of Assyrian, uh, at great cost. Not just to ourselves, but also to our allies. Because we weren't here to defend people, the whole eastern part, the whole northeastern part anyway, of Uthuan has fallen to pirates and dark elves. You hear the disgust in my voice when I say that? So, I don't know, maybe we'll be able to help. I'm hoping that these two armies combined are scary enough that the scaling army won't come in, but I don't. I'm pretty sure they're going to. Right. Hexwaddle's ritual completed successfully. This is not a big deal. I'm not too concerned about these early rituals. They're going to get them done. We don't really have the resources to interfere, but as the game gets closer to uh, to being over, as they get more and more of their stuff done, we, uh, we will have to start paying attention. We're a good... 50 turns away from having to even think about that, though. Probably more than 50. Man, the Vortex, lo vortex looks really cool when there's a lot of <laughs> rituals going on. Alright. The Scaling's turn is, like, all the way at the end of the order, I think. So here's these pirates that I don't particularly care for. Maybe they, uh... Oh? Oh? They have, in fact, engaged the Scalings. And then the Scalings have taken that opportunity to move their army a tremendous distance. This is the thing. When people retreat from a battle, they, uh, they, move a, they move a certain distance as the crow flies. And if that means their army has to run 700 miles away to cross a bridge to get over there, then by God, they will do it. So this is not great. These pirates completely removed our possibility of protecting Carenthal. The good news is that they've weakened the scalings a little bit, but it looks like the scalings won that battle. Alright, we're about to get attacked too, but they can't have much movement left. We've been running around like crazy here. Nope, apparently they have enough movement left. Well, we certainly can't fight them. Yeah. We're dead. So, the good news is... The Pirates of Sartosa and the Scalings are officially at war. The bad news is, have they killed... No, no, okay. Ivres has one settlement left. It does not have walls. And it has less than a full stack guarding it, so probably they're doomed. All the factions that I like are getting murdered, and all the factions that I don't like are just surviving next to each other. Filled with hate, but not actually engaging in any military actions, as far as I can tell. Alright. So, this guy's going to be a map action hero, right? This is, this is why we hired him. I'm pretty sure we still want to pick up Assassinate. I think these are all going to be very important. He increases trade in the region that he's in. I don't know. I don't know how valuable that is. I really don't have a good sense for how much money exactly you get out of trade. Defender of Elf One. All right, well, let's move this army to a place where it might be a little bit more relevant. I mean, I'm pleased that this happened. I think we, uh, I think we did some work here with our influence spending. I don't know. Maybe the pirates of Sartosa and Scaling being at each other's throats will be enough to keep our calendar clear for a little bit. We are ill at ease. Okay, we got to do some. We need to do some redecorating over here. I suppose we should start upgrading Calidor's Repose so that we can get walls around it since it is on the outer edge of our territory. Uh, the Glittering Tower is where I was going to build my grove, but that's going to have to wait. Actually, you know what? The people are rested. If we don't make this upgrade, we can start the grove next turn. That's probably what we ought to do. And then once we have the grove, we can start recruiting some actual good units, maybe. 
Okay, so we have bonus for cavalry units. And we have all the bonuses that really matter. I suppose let's start working on this. We will have Eagle Claw Bolt Throwers again. Eventually. For right now, though, we are waiting. A lot of waiting to do. We'll pop the Invocation of Asurion soon. I should probably do it right before I take the, uh, right before I start building the grove. So I guess we're going to delay another turn on the grove. <coughs> but we can defray the cost of the ritual a little bit by building that, uh, or by doing that grove building right after we pop it. Right, I wonder if Avalorn, is there an easy way through these mountains over here? It looks like on the map the mountain range is quite solid. Oh, man. I'm concerned about this. These guys don't particularly like us. Eh, it's a positive number. Hey, we have a trade agreement with them, right? But not a non-aggression pact? Nagarond's doing their thing, that's fine. Not really that concerned about Nagarond at this moment. Of course. What would you have of the Phoenix King, stranger? Oh no, other way around. We have a non aggression pact, but not a trade agreement. This is a good trade agreement. Like Please accept it. Oh, come on. I don't really have a lot of money to play with right now. I feel like they should want military access more. I guess maybe they're not concerned because they're stronger than we are? They don't trust other elves. Well that, honestly, based on what we've seen so far, seems like a really good policy. Okay, so we have enough money to pop the uh, ritual, but not enough money to pop the ritual and start the grove building. However, if we pop the ritual we would get a public order boost. That might be valuable. You know what, let's hit it. We know that we will have enough money for the grove before the end of the ritual. Next turn. And under the effects of the ritual, it's 3750. That's a pretty good savings right off the bat. Champion of the Ever Queen. I am honored. Alright, we gotta get some vision over here. Well, here's a wounded pirate army. That's not great. My journey begins. Yeah, that makes me a little nervous. So we're plus seven, we're plus five over here. Order must be maintained. Mm, it's probably not worth turning taxation back on. Let's just enjoy the plus seven for a little while. And then we definitely don't want to turn taxation back on in Kalidor. All right, as much fun as this is to watch, I'm sure. I think we're just passing the turn again. We'll build our grove, get access to, access to some decent units, and also the ability to move our faction quest along a little bit more. We're going to get these legendaries. We do need to find some stuff to do to get Tyrion more XP. So we need to we need to tangle with some scaling armies or something, but we need to do it in a way where we can win. Welcome. What brings you here? What's up, guys? Join your war against the pirates of Sartosa. Hmm. We could turn on the pirates of Sartosa, couldn't we? So they have some more land off to the east, this island, I guess. Am I allowed to look at their... I wish I could see, like, from mousing over this, tell me what their position is on the charts, like... What is their strength rank? That's a thing I'd like to know. I think I have to say no. It's too dangerous. As much as I would love for Ivress to survive, I... We are not terribly strong right now. Can't really afford to run two armies. Can't really afford good units.
Actually, maybe we should confederate these guys. Never mind. I'm always a little nervous to take on other people's financial issues, but confederating them could have been a good way to hold some land. Alright, so we're properly walled up. The Straits of Lothurn are well defended. I feel good about that, at least. We almost have more uh, building slots over here. Let's hold off on building anything more for the moment. The good news is, things are mostly being left ruined instead of being inhabited. The bad news is, I have no vision at all over here. We may want to separate the noble out and have him run ahead. How many turns are we looking at on that grove? Three? Yeah, 1789, unfortunately, is only enough to support one more lord and maybe, like, two units. We're gonna need a lot more money before we're able to generate a real army. So what is Tiranok doing here? We should check their diplomatic standing with these uh, eastern factions. Because I'm not really clear on what their goal is. Well, the Cult of Pleasure just declared war on them, actually. That's interesting. I don't know exactly where the Cult of Pleasure is on the map. I'm pretty sure they're in the northwestern area, but... It's not a huge amount of information. There are secrets. Folly of Youth. A young prince. Okay, we've seen this event before. What's uh, what's your deal, young prince? That is a pretty good follower, but we do really need influence right now. Recruitment cost up doesn't really do anything to us, because I don't think we're going to be doing a lot of recruiting. Let's privately chide him. He just, uh, you know, he needs to learn the rules. Listen, Elven High Society is complicated, right? So the Scalings burned down the Shrine of Loic and then came over and settled it afterward? Yeah, Avalon is unfortunately not really in a position to help us out with this. Plus, they got their own problems. Probably Avalon is the only one keeping us safe from the Dark Elves. I bid you welcome to the court of the Phoenix King. Okay, so their diplomatic relationships are total mysteries to me. Well, they're not going to go for this now. Our relationship is deteriorating. We've got to fix that up. Let's have the noble scout ahead. Forward at once. <sighs> okay, the scaling have two armies in the area. But they're both pretty weak right now. I'm concerned that if I if I march hard over to here so that I'm in a place to threaten these guys next turn, we will get fallen upon by both of them simultaneously, which would probably be pretty bad. We could take Cairn Thel and probably hold it. Right, they're not in a position to attack me. You have my attention. Yeah, let's do that. Let's take Cairn Thel and establish it. Got another trade good. Protector of the Everqueen. What do you require? Alright, he has to get back in this army because we need the extra replenishment. So we'll get that next turn. We can take this region. We can we can make this ours. Once we have the extra replenishment from the noble, we'll rebuild pretty quickly, and they don't have a large enough army to be able to threaten us this turn. Next turn they might be able to make something happen, but we have access to Lightning Strike, so if they don't bring a force that's able uh, able to attack us profitably on its own, we can just take their armies on one by one. 
Lightning Strike is really, really very powerful. It's not something you always use or need, but uh, it lets you break down the forces of economically superior enemies pretty easily. And uh, the AI, if you're playing on very hard, the AI, AI is always going to be economically superior to you. Winning on the higher difficulties is very much about making the most out of relatively little. Hmm, it looks like they're going to pull out entirely. Oh good, the population in one of our settlements is vanishing. On certain nights, whole ghettos or districts are left abandoned. The only clue for the remaining denizens is a triangular symbol daubed on a nearby gator wall. Hey, here's a question, Lorehammer... Lorehammer? Warhammer lore people. You know, Lorehammer people. Might be able to answer for me. Uh, why did the Skaven leave evidence of their passing? What is the benefit to the Skaven of putting up a mark here saying, Oh, it was definitely us. If you want revenge, you know where to get it. I have much to teach them. Okay, yeah, look at how much better the replenishment's gonna be over this next turn than it was over the last turn. So Caranthel's coming along. Uh, we don't really want to do too much else right now. I do want to upgrade Kalidor's Repose, but it's not in danger right now. And I'm wondering if it might be better for us to push this building, or push this settlement. Get access to great weapons. Get plus 5% weapon strength for the White Lions that we're about to start using. The Asser are troubled! Okay, the second level of this doesn't actually generate more currency, it just generates a pretty good garrison upgrade. I'm not too worried about that. Let's go ahead and upgrade this. We're making good money, at least. Well, we're making okay money. So we want to build Cairnthel up into a reasonably defensible settlement, and that'll allow us to push on the scalings. Avalorn seems pretty powerful. Tyrannox seems pretty powerful. With any luck, we'll be able to use them to keep the Dark Elves off our back, at least for a while, until we can come over and start contributing. So let's see if the Scalings have any interest in us at all. They might just back off, and if they do then that'll make it easier for us to take the city in southern, southern Ivress back. Okay. For Alari, my queen. We have been sieged. Uh, well. I guess Lothar and Seaguard are way more likely to make it into our army than eagles. I don't really care for eagles. Pretty hard not to take Righteous Cause. Minus 10 upkeep for all units and all forces. That's an extra 400 gold per turn right there. Never. I'm surprised they were able to get all the way from their settlement to here without marching. They must have some significant movement buffs. Well, this has a slightly uh, favored. I guess their army is largely missile cavalry with very low armor. So we get to shoot a lot of them, and then also we have spearmen. Honestly, I may just auto-resolve this because the auto-resolve paints us as the winners, and I'm just going to let the AI do this. I'm not 100% sure that I would win this battle. And I hate dealing with Marauder Horsemen. They're some of, probably the least fun enemies in the game to fight. Uh, we definitely need to take the replenishment here. I do appreciate them coming over and giving me a thousand gold, though.
What orders? Well, we beat that them. Will incur my wrath. Their army looks very sad now. Great I imagine story. this should be a much better auto resolve. One thing I really like about auto-resolving against these uh, against enemies with this army is it always gives crazy number of kills to the archers, and they're leveling up very quickly. Alright, uh, we probably are not in a good place to push this settlement, given that it has a garrison and everything. But that's gonna... that's gonna blunt their assault. So we have Righteous Cause, let's keep working on Quartermaster. We might be able to uh, to mount a second army any time now, actually. Is the Grove finished? The Grove is finished. So what is the global recruitment time? Four turns for White Lions. Okay, well... How many do I need for that quest? Two. We could just sit here recruiting for two turns. We're going to be healed up in two turns. I guess these spears need a little while longer. But I guess the, the better thing to do is probably to get back over the border and just local recruit. I'm a little concerned about that leaving Cairn Thel vulnerable, though. As long as our army is here, it's a lot safer. Awaiting orders. Also, they're quite expensive through the global pool. They'll be about half this much. Through the local. Yeah, I should I should probably just run. They're building up. It looks like they were injured recently. If we lose Canthel, it really isn't the end of the world. Protector of the Everqueen. It's not ideal, but it's not the end of the world. We have shaped this world. I think we have to do this. It's fifty extra raw income. Plus 5% from every building in this province, and 3% from every building in adjacent provinces, which means all of our income. That's our entire empire right now. Two extra building slots, yeah. We'll probably be able to still afford the White Lions. Like I said, they'll be a lot cheaper to recruit through local. Yeah, and if the Norskins want to come over and take Cairn Thel... Hmm. If they can ride from that settlement to this settlement and attack it this turn, we probably just turn around and kill them, right? I guess I don't know for sure that I'll have enough movement to do so. If they can make it from their city to Cairn Thel, though, I can make it from here to Cairn Thel. Alright, this is the best, the best bonus. What a good bonus for just doing stuff you were definitely going to be doing anyway. Alright, then we'll go into encampment. Give ourselves a little bit of extra replenish. The white lions are from over here. Man. Okay, so we had to go all the way to the glittering tower. That's right, this is not the Straits of Lothurn. Your orders? Okay. And I can't recruit while I'm in March states. We are ill at ease. We're gonna make three thousand more gold this coming turn. We can afford to do this. Ah, the ritual just ended, that's a shame. So, as it is, we're going to be recruiting one turn before that recruitment penalty wears off, but I don't think it's a big deal. 25% extra money on relatively expensive troops is unfortunate, but it's not going to break our bank. I think we should be fine. And I think it was a fine, it was a fine trade-off for the influence we got. Because we're going to want to hire a second, uh, second lord, and we're going to need it to be a good one. You know, a second second lord, because of the thing that happened to the first second lord. It really did not unfold the way I was expecting it to. Alright. 
Oh, that's right. His troops recruit in one less turn through the normal pool with him. I'm not still not sure exactly how his recruitment bonus works, but it's made these guys fast. So for comparison, White Lions have actual armor on. They have 16 more melee attack, not a huge amount of melee defense. I mean, they don't have shields. Their damage is largely armor piercing, which is not particularly relevant against um, Norska. They have this lion cloak, which aids against missile attacks. That's good. Norska has a lot of like javelin throwing. Armored, armor piercing, melee attack and defense advantages in forests. Oh, and then also a lot of melee defense. Wait, our other units have this too, right? Okay, is this is this just the thing that all high elf units have? While we're at more than half health, we get a bunch of bonus melee defense. That's pretty cool. So we need to recruit at least this from the from the pool here. But I mean, these guys are pretty good it seems like. We probably do need spearmen though. These guys are much more armored, but they have much less melee defense. And melee defense can some, can make enemies not hit you at all. So we probably want to keep running spears to some extent. Yeah, okay, so let's do this. We'll uh, Next turn, we'll start moving back. They're going to take Karenthal, and then we're going to uh, go on a Norskin murdering spree. I think it should be okay. Plus, at some point, we're going to hit the end of one of these damn legendary item quest lines and actually get to get the legendary item. I always find this to be the most difficult part of a Total War Warhammer campaign. The part before you can really afford to have a second full-time army. So the White Lions have a pretty high upkeep cost, and that's part of why I didn't want to just go full-on White Lions. The other reason is that even though they have a lot of armor, they probably still uh, they probably still will die faster than Spearmen in melee combat due to the fact that the Spearmen are so good at not getting hit. Kill 500 enemies in battle. Yeah, I can do that. So we want to use the Spearmen to tie up enemy units, and then use the White Lions to hit them in the back and deal vastly superior damage. Do we have recruitment structures here? We do. Okay. So we can do one turn of movement out toward the uh, scalings. Pull in a couple more units of Spearmen here on the road. And that'll fill up the army. Alright, what's up with this quest? Now is the time for Tyrion to prove worthy of the tiled Defender. After sowing disquiet across the inner and outer kingdoms, the enemy finally makes its move. However, Tyrion is there to strike back. With the Ever Queen's blessing, he rides forth to bring ruin on the trespassers. Unfortunately, the dragon armor of Anarion is damaged in the onslaught. A lucky strike, perhaps. Or something more contrived. In any event, the armor must be returned to where it was, to where it was forged, for repair. That's weird. They seem to have narrated a thing that hasn't yet happened. In this upcoming battle where we kill 500 enemies, the armor will be damaged. Tyrion, right. heir of Anarion. A blue action noble is not super useful against um, Norska. Because this version of Norska doesn't have heroes or anything. Uh, I cannot wait for them to get proper Norska into the game. The Shrine of Asurion's not really in a lot of danger. I kind of wonder if we should maybe not even do this upgrade, just save population to upgrade Angariel. Okay, well that's 200 extra income per turn. Hard to turn that down. Let's get the wine building going as well. The wine tech research is just extra public order in all provinces. Yeah, that's going to be really nice to have. I really dig this... Uh, this powerful text connected to your trade goods thing. I like anything that increases the strategic value of particular cities on the map. Uh, the fact that this game seems to have way more cities that have special buildings that you can build is a great example of the kind of thing that I'm into. 
So I'm hoping that they populate Carenthal this turn. Because the army will lose a bunch of its strength having soldiers settle the city and then we can run over here and crush them. Honestly, we probably can just straight up crush them. I bet my army one unit to one unit is better than theirs. Oh, they did it. The winds of pain. The word yields the world yields to those who master the winds of magic. Okay. Big big winds of magic boost. I don't think that's relevant in this fight. Oh, you're kidding me, I'm not in range. Man, I feel like I feel like the Norskins definitely move further than I do. Well I don't see any Norskin armies beyond. Beginning my journey. I say we still ride on them. <laughs> yeah, they'll they'll get a turn of healing, but they won't be at full strength. And their units are mostly pretty bad. Ready to serve. I think with this army we should definitely be able to take them. Okay, let's see if we can uh Maybe they'll fall for it? Maybe they'll decide to ride out? I don't know. I want to be able to control this, the circumstances of this coming battle, though. We gotta get another tech building up. We're gonna run out of stuff to research. The Asa are ageless. We probably ought to not spend a lot of money right now. Yeah. We're about to open up new building slots in Lothurn, and we're gonna want to make stuff. You must restore order. How long until... Okay, the Invocation of Vols available again next turn. I'm wondering if we just hit it on cooldown to keep the Dilemma thing rolling, because it is pretty good. Actually, it does give... It does give um, stuff that's relevant now, now that we can summon one of the units that's on here. Kernos summon. Guide. Recruit, sorry. Listen, it may as well be magic. I'm curious to see what these guys will do. With us being invisible to them, assuming that the ambush roll worked, they might leave Cairnthal? Possibly. I think what's most likely to happen is that they just sit there. If they just sit there, I think we probably are able to attack them productively. If they come out here and attack us, it will end poorly for the- oh, unless they have a second army nearby. Which, of course they do. Okay, he went off into the darkness, though. Defender of Elfwood. Well, I mean, we would crush this force. Chaos Warhounds are, uh, are real bad units. Yeah, and Carenthal has a currently a four-unit garrison, and I'm assuming these guys are not at full health since the garrison just got built. The only real bad news about this is that I don't think there's 500 people in that army for us to kill. Okay, so we can upgrade this thing. It'll give us access to cultural advancements, better nobles, increase income from the entertainment building by 30%, which is fine. What is in cultural... Oh yeah, that's right. Cultural advancements is a whole lot of really good stuff, actually. We should probably do that. The Asher are troubled. We should definitely keep pushing on this. Ever loyal. My ancestors would be proud. All right, let's... To serve my queen. Do we just hit Karen Thel directly? Looks like, huh? It doesn't. Sh it doesn't show that they'll sh they'll uh, come as reinforcements. I'm not actually sure I'm that I want to take Canthel right this second. I do know that I want to kill these guys, though. and they marched in, so they can't. Uh... So we're definitely giving plus weapon damage to the White Lions, and immune to psychology. Honestly, I don't know that this. Sun the value of that is hard to predict. Days. All right, let's kill everybody. Let's kill everybody easily with almost no losses. Hey, that was 500 units. What do you know? Well, we could just go back to full health. I think probably we should do that. Laborers reduce the load on the troops, making recovery more swift. We should probably go back to full health because we know there's a full 
stack of scalings somewhere nearby. Walker Christensen is slain. Quest done. Okay, finally. We've hit the end. Tyrion returns the dragon armor to Vol's anvil, where it was first created. While Tyrion impatiently waits within while Vol's smiths re-knit the armor, he is called to the shrine's entrance. Druki gather. They certainly knew of Tyrion's whereabouts. Perhaps the armor's failing was a trap after all. Tyrion prepares his host for war. He will face the hated foe without his usual protection. Although he does not need it, for he is Ulthuan's defender. I don't know, we might need it. So we do this, we get... 10% ward save. This isn't a huge amount better than the armor we're already wearing, actually, but it does mean that we can pass off the quite good armor we're already wearing to our second lord when we hire them. So what does this look like? They got some witch elves, which I don't know a lot about, except for the fact that they're pretty good at blood bowl. Harpies, which are pretty much just garbage units. They're fast. They get in your archers and stuff, but honestly, I bet, I bet harpies lose melee combat against archers a lot. Black Arc Corsairs, Anti-Infantry, High Armor, very good melee attack. Well, okay, melee attack. This is a scary force. A lot of armor. Witch Elves don't really have any armor. So these Witch Elves actually would be maybe not that dangerous, because they're going to get archered real bad. I don't know if I want to go after this battle with a force of... Uh, a full stack of scalings just like right out of vision Ancestors right out of vision we know they can't be much more than a turn of movement away because we saw them move away last turn yeah I don't know that's a tough one let's think about that for a second we got a bunch of money from that battle what do we want to do with it we, are Ill at ease. we probably still don't want to upgrade this All right. So we do need we do need a second shrine of Asurion. We uh we could delete the growth building here. Twenty seven growth is more than a fifth of our total growth. It's more than a quarter of our total growth. Uh, probably that's not worth doing. Let's just wait until we can upgrade this, and then we'll build our shrine. Or we could build it here, actually. Yeah, let's do that. So I guess that's all the stuff we're spending money on. For my queen. Fifteen hundred XP is more than a level. No, it's almost exactly a level. So he would level up because he gets some XP from actually fighting. Thirty wave fragments. I'm not too concerned about. Honestly, the armor's not that important at this moment. Let's not worry about this. We can just go and take Cairn Thel, and because it's not oh, empty. Fly we can occupy it without losing troops. It kind of doesn't make a lot of sense, given that we killed everyone in the city. And if the city had been empty when we approached, we would have had to devote a bunch of guys to taking it. But I guess this is how it has worked out. We'll see about uh, we'll see about these dudes at Elisali... Elis... That one. We'll see about the dudes over there next turn. No. Sorry, I was trying to click this button. We'll get to the rituals. I'm not, uh, not in any hurry on that front. So, I mean, we did it. We, we made the AI make a bad decision by going into ambush mode. It does help sometimes. Yeah, so the, the quest for the dragon armor will become a lot more relevant once we have a... Second Lord out. Oh. Interesting. This, ju this just got burnt down. This was owned by the Pirates of Sartosa last time we saw it, wasn't it? That suggests to me that the Scalings the may have brought that big stack of theirs over there. My journey begins. Uh, indeed. They have abandoned Elisaly. Well. They're trying to rebuild at the Shrine of Loic. No! Ready for orders. Very well. We should head this way. We can hit this army outside the city using lightning strike to prevent the garrison from participating in the attack. Kill them, then hit the garrison. 
We'll blow out two stacks and take back a, I'm assuming, a relatively valuable city over here. Although Elisaly is the capital. And then we'll head back up for Elisaly. Because once we have this, once we have this turned back to us, it should be fairly easy to defend it, I think. It's kind of out of the way. Although it does have a sea entrance. Alright, so the next thing we probably need is a forge. It would be cool to have mages. We should probably get mages, because right now we have no use at all for our winds of magic. I just really want to have another bolt thrower, but yeah, maybe maybe mages next. The Asser are troubled. We should probably work on getting our public order above zero there. We are Ill at ease. It's going to be so much easier once we have proper wine. So, what did dyes give us? What is the die tech? This is probably spices, right? This is dyes, okay. Plus 10% income from entertainment buildings, which are the public order buildings. So this is really nice, because we're going to be building public order buildings all over the place anyway. Alright, so the way this could go really wrong for us is they could pull the weak army out of the city and put it like behind. Pull this army into the city and have them finish their recruitment in the city. The other thing that could go wrong, I guess, is they could have this army attack us, backed up by another army that comes in from the sea. But right now, these guys are not uh, are not going to be able to beat us in a stack versus stack fight. Let's see what they do. They are, in fact, bringing in another stack, but they won't be able to reach us. Yep, they've done it. That is exactly the thing that was uh, that was best for them. Well, tricky. I was kind of hoping they'd just be too dumb to do the right thing, you know. It's the AI, that happens. Wow, it is really nice to have high public order as elves. So we're one turn off of having the next step toward our sword completed... A lot of not that exciting economic stuff going on here. It's cheaper to build the forge. The forge gives us access to military advancements 3. This gives us military advancements 2. And those things aren't actually bound by one another. They're just numbered. It's not a progression. So what's in 2? Missile damage for archers. That's pretty good. Minus upkeep for archers. Armor for basic units. Some buffs for cavalry. Okay, the top part of this tree is extremely... Or the top part of this grouping is very relevant to what we're doing. What about these guys? This is what I was uh, a little bit afraid of with Military Advancements 3. It's not that useful to us because it's going to be all about units that we're not really using yet. Silver Helms, Dragon Princes, Lore Masters of Hoeth and Mages... Award save for Phoenix, that's pretty cool. Yeah, this stuff is all good, but it's not good for us yet. So I suppose we, yeah, we're going to wait for mages. Military advancements too would be nice to have access to. And then we'll get some, uh, we'll get some administrators going and stuff. So they are now on 25 units versus our 20. Over here, it's worse, but Norskins, for some reason, don't believe in walls, so at least we don't have to worry about sieges. Ever vigilant. Hmm. We might still be able to do this, actually. Our units are just a lot better than theirs. Not because our units are good, but because the base Norskin units are very bad. Like, Marauders are just terrible fighters. They do have shields, though. Plus five armor. Mo mostly this is relevant to recruitment. 
A little bit of extra armor is not a bad thing, but it's not... I don't think this right is super relevant to whether we'll fight or not. But I do kind of want to take the dilemma for the powerful magic item. Let's hit this, see if, uh, see if this magic item is anything relevant to our situation. We should probably keep this on cooldown. So, a blade of sea gold. Minus 40 weapon damage, so it, it turns 40 of your normal weapon damage into armor piercing damage, basically. That's fine. A magic item that buffs leadership. Map resistance, or magic resistance for all of my units. That's pretty good. Oh, wow. Miscast chance down by 50%. That means that uh, most overcasts would have a 0% chance of miscasting, doesn't it? I'm going to take this, even though it's not super relevant right this second, because we are going to be getting mages in the near future. And that'll be really relevant on them once we do. So, not relevant right now. Can we see what the garrison is over here? Marauder Horsemen. Chaos Marauders with great weapons. I bet we can just take these guys. We may have to do it manually, but I think we can take them. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I'm not going to bother fighting that manually. Bring Let's, uh... me battle. Yeah, Marauder Berser or Chaos Marauders are just not... Ready. <laughs> They're not good units. We lost 200 men. One of my archer units got 339 kills, another 334. Honestly, yeah, that makes sense. These dudes are... Soft targets. Pin cushions. There is glory to be won. Alright, pretty good. And this, uh, this big beautiful replenishment bonus that this guy is bringing is going to have us ready to fight that other stack in no time. Uh, we probably ought to take the horse. I would imagine. I know we're going to be a map action here on everything, but... As long as we're still fighting stuff. Horses are pretty good. Also, I don't know if the horse actually inc improves his uh, map movement when he's detached from an army, but it definitely should, right? So this is another 5% movement range, lowered upkeep for all of our units. Um, we recruit better stuff. Pretty much a no-brainer. And now we're at 28.12 with... Uh, extra income, even though we have some units that are not, first of all, are much more expensive, and secondly, are not benefiting from our upkeep reduction. So hopefully that's enough to start running a second, uh, a second group. Man, and the shrine has functional recruitment buildings in it already, that's great. I'm just gonna build a growth building here for now. Okay, that's still not something we want to mess with. We do need to finish upgrading that when it's available. Okay. We probably ought to spend some money. We have enough money. Actually, we know what we're spending it on. That's right, this very expensive thing. Alright, let's see if these guys ride out for Karenthal. If we could catch them on the road, that would be the easiest thing. We'll be basically back at full health at the start of the turn, and uh, obviously this stack should be the 20 stack of random Chaos Marauders pretty or pretty easily. Unfortunately, these places are all corrupted up from all the Chaos fighting, and it's going to be a while before we can get that down. Actually, it's still going up because of the fact that the capital is Chaos aligned right now, probably. That's interesting. I'm actually showing as more powerful than that faction. The Dark Elves are onto their second ritual already. Wow. Alright, so we got that done. The conspiracy is traced to Safari, where the Prince's lies have spread to the Lore Masters. I hate those guys. While Tyrion simply tries to hunt down and face his accusers, he finds an aggressive battle line in the Lee of the White Tower, for the Mages of Hoth have ever been Teclis's people. 
The princes would have, would have that Tyrion's recent actions prove that he is not the honorable defender of Ulthuan, but a Druki sympathizer, a weakness of his lineage. Battle is inevitable. All right, so we're actually right on this. This is a big deal. Plus three public order to all provinces. It's a lot of extra weapon damage. It gives us a cool spell. Reinforcements expected. This is a pretty easy army to fight, although they do have an Eagle Claw bolt, bolt Thrower. But let's not do this right now, because we may so need Tyrion's army to be in good shape here. The so the unfortunate part trouble. about this is that we don't have room to start building up our walls. The other unfortunate thing is that it's going to be like a year before we have the population necessary to start building the real walls. But we it's probably better for us to have the recruitment buildings around, at least for right now. So let's not demolish those. Shield against the darkness. Let's get off the island and uh, see what things look like out here. Uh, these guys still haven't left Elisaly. I'm gonna try going into ambush mode. Maybe we can trick them into doing something unwise again. And we'll go after Sunfang soon, but I don't think it's a good idea to do it right now. This is not terribly important. So next turn we'll be able to do this. We may as well start the construction of the walls now. Because soon, or the defensive structure, because soon it will actually be walls. Uh, there's some, some treasure to be had. Maybe now is when we, oh no, we don't have the, oh, never mind, we totally do have the influence necessary to get a good lord. Let's find a good one. Oh, that's right. Belakai's at the top of the list because she's just waiting. Waiting for her chance to go again. So, very good in combat. Causes fear in melee combat. That's pretty good. Armor and melee defense. Upkeep down for archers, Lothar and Seaguard, and Illyrian Reavers. Is, Illyrian Reavers are the horse cavalry? The horse cavalry. The, the horse archers, right? Yeah. Wait, what was her? Yeah, okay, it is. So it's upkeep down for archers, sea guard, and Illyrian reaver units. And then range for Illyrian reaver archers. Are Illyrian reaver archers considered to be Illyrian reaver units, or does that only apply to the unit that has that Order exact name? That could be a little clearer. But probably it means it's upkeep down for both of these guys. So that's pretty good. That's a pretty good lord. Charge bonus 20% for the entire army. Plus weapon strength up for cavalry. Plus missile damage for cavalry archers. Wow. This is very good. I mean, it kind of types the army pretty strongly, but it's a very strong series of bonuses. We can also just pick up the White Lions guy now that we have White Lions available. But now I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Vera, Vera the Cavalry Princess, and we're gonna make a cavalry army. What would you have of me? That's too cool not to do. Uh, that said, we're still gonna need Blue Line because it's still very hard, and we're still gonna you know be paying out the nose for these units. So we don't actually have a cavalry structure here. Should I make one? I can't make one. We just have a ride over here and recruit. You must restore order. So it's just Illyrian Reavers though, right? Not Silverhelms? I've already forgotten what her traits do. Oh no, it's Silverhelms too. Plus 20% weapon strength, plus 20% charge bonus. That is bananas. Yeah, alright, I'm just gonna have her uh, run over to like Cairnthal and she'll recruit in Cairnthal. Uh, we probably should not do that. We should finish upgrading the Shrine of Loic. Uh, let's see if the scalings do anything crazy. I gotta say, though, this uh, this cavalry princess thing sounds really cool. I don't really play with cavalry units all that much. I guess I tend to play forces that don't have a lot of good cavalry. Uh, when we played Bretonia was the only time I've really used a lot of horses. My impression of cavalry is that they're 
pretty micro-intensive, or at least the shock cavalry are. But if we can deal with these, uh, if we can deal with these scalings, get these guys under control. Oh, looks like our ambush did not work. But also, they are a vastly inferior force. Oh, you know what? Our ambush did work in the sense that they started moving before they knew where we were. We didn't get the ambush attack, but they were running down to, uh, they were running down to the island to reclaim that city, so. Ambush successful, as far as I'm concerned. And yeah, we'll just take the replenishment, go back to basically full health, and then complete the area. Complete the uh, province. A Tracian Scout. Wow, that's a lot of chance of not getting ambushed there. And plus five leadership when fighting Chaos and Norska. That's actually going to come in handy because the armies that show up to stop you from completing your rituals are Chaos and Norska aligned. Our ambush was sort of foiled. Technically, the ambush was foiled. Kill them. Attack! I am ready to fight. Wow, zero lost, really? For Alaria, my queen. There were like twelve hundred of those guys. They didn't manage to kill any of us. That's hard to believe. Okay, so now that Tyrion's got the blue line stuff I was really eager for. We could go and get Elven healing, but I think I'd like to start into the red line, maybe? As much as it would be cool to have Tyrion be a total combat monster, buffs to the entire army seem wise. So what do we have available here? We can get... That's weird. This skill buffs melee attack and melee defense for archers. And then missile damage only for Illyrian Reavers. It's just, it's weird how split up all the archer buffs are. I guess it's important to keeping you from making your archers incredibly powerful. Well, we're not really a chariot army. We need to spend five points in this skill group, so we'd probably take, like, Bowmaster. Right, ammunition and reload time reduction. Ammunition has been an actual problem for us. Get a bunch of ammunition... And then, like, maybe this skill to make our spearmen a little better, or... Honestly, probably this skill. Because we're going to start getting better units. So we'll head down the red line, and then once we get into the second box, we get to start buffing up units that have, uh, have veterancy, and we already have a couple units of our new uh, archers are rank 7 already. Which is pretty good, considering a lot of these units were very recently hired. Alright, uh, you can finish off specialists, just get even better at stuff. How long until we can hire a mage? One more turn. I might want to run this for a little while. We're trending down towards zero corruption, but we're not trending as fast as we could be. And being on zero corruption is really valuable. Corruption is such a pain. So we already have recruitment structures. Honestly, just get growth. Growth in this, uh, this province is so poor right now. And for the moment, we're pretty rich. Do I maybe want to save up and just let us... Let us go right to here? That'll get us Sword Masters of Hoth and the Lore Master of Hoth, which is... It says Invariable Gifted Warriors. Are they wizards? I thought they were wizards. I guess it's using warrior in, like, the broad sense of people who participate in a war. And we have a lot of settlement upgrades available. Am I clicking through stuff that I shouldn't be clicking through? Oh, well, I should definitely be upgrading that. Alright, unfortunately that wizard tower upgrade is pretty expensive, so we probably ought to save our money from here.
So the Scaling have their, I think their home is off the northeast side of Ulthalon. It's not, uh, it's not going to be easy to finish them off. I would really love to. Love to not have to worry about them again. The Pirates of Sartosa have declared on the Scourge of Cain. I wonder... We might be able to be friends with the Pirates of Sartosa, because we know they're at war with the Scaling. And we're doing some fine work on their behalf right now. Alright, so we unlocked the Invocation of Hoeth. We can't use it yet, but... Ah, uh, that's right. When we do it, it just makes our mages really great for a while. So Pack Ice Bay is out here. We probably would not take this over because the climate is really harsh. We can't afford to have far-flung settlements that are going to give us a lot of trouble right now. Ooh. Pastures. Do pastures... Call the Great Herds? Okay. Upgrades for... Speed upgrades for our horse units. That's not quite that exciting. But yeah, maybe this is a good time to finish off the scaling and maybe... We can take advantage of the fact that we're doing that with these guys. Actually, they really like us. What? I am ready to parley. I hope your words are wise. Oh yeah, trade agreement. They don't really have anything, but I'll take it. Of course. I don't like the fact that they participated in the destruction of Ivress. In fact, that they may be largely responsible for the destruction of Ivress, but... We can forgive for now. So do these guys, the scaling, they have six settlements. I can see one, two, three, four, I guess probably up around here. We should push them. I think this is a good time for Tyrion to ride off and try to murder all scalings forever. Yeah, because they're building up, and if we let them build up, then we'll never be rid of them. Ooh, a skull reef. That's a lot of money over there. Let's go grab that huge amount of money. And then we'll uh, we'll start coming back around here and we'll plan to make landfall on the beach. A Rampager standard, plus 7% charge bonus. Okay, that's something that uh, we could assign to the princess. The skull-shaped lair lying ominously on the horizon could only be the hidden horde of Count Noctilus, legendary vampire admiral who was the scourge of the seas in his great vessel, the Bloody Reaver. Legend has it that Noctilus's treasure is hidden upon the great ocean and guarded by zombie crewmates damned to protect it for all eternity. That is, until your fleet chances upon the lair. So when you find the Skull Reef, uh, it always gives you 10,000 gold plus something. You should always, always, always hit the Skull Reef. To adventure. Well, now that we're crazy rich, Let's, uh, let's upgrade our mage tower. And also this thing, right? Oh, it gives plus one untainted in adjacent provinces. That's nice. It'll help clear the chaos corruption out of here. And it'll let us recruit phoenixes again. I'm not sure that I care about that. The phoenix was fine. Maybe frostheart phoenixes are cool. Armored, armor piercing. Yeah, actually, these sound like they could be useful. But this is what I'm really into, is being able to eventually recruit Phoenix Guard. But upgrading the Shrine of Asurion doesn't get us any closer to any tech or anything. Uh, maybe this would be a good time to start up Dragon Recruitment. Let's see, what else could we get? We could just get our Forge. We will need it eventually. I'm not super hot on Chariots. Let's get a dragon building. Lothurn is going to be the place where all the coolest units come from. Oh yeah, and you need to get into a city. Oh, we're about to have a rebellion. Unfortunately, I've not left her a lot of money to use to recruit. Maybe we shouldn't go for the dragon building. Because I think actually what we really need is to get this army online. So let's go... These guys are mostly shock cavalry. Yeah, melee attack and defense is fine. Charge bonus is very large. Uh, does she want any non-cavalry units? I think I'm going to say no. I think we're going to just go really hard on... 
let's let's recruit mostly these guys because they're a little cheaper, and then we'll bring in our archers through uh, through the local recruitment pool. All right, I think that's a better use of that money. Honestly, we're gonna need this army in place because it's gonna be the army that fights off this rebellion anyway. So. I'm glad I rec uh, glad I researched this already. So we have six turns on that. We're going to be able to research the wine thing in three turns. I'm not actually working on uh, resource stuff anywhere else, right? We are ill at ease. Yeah, I put it all on hold. So we don't have terribly long before we're just not using our research. We gotta make sure that we unlock stuff. Well, the Mage Tower's finished. Shouldn't we have access to... I am Tyrion, champion of the Everqueen. What's up, Avalon? Uh, no, absolutely not. Do not make military alliances with AI factions. It's very, very dangerous. Because they will add your strength to their own when considering who that gives them the ability to fight with, and then they will declare war on all kinds of people that you don't want to be at war with, and then they will demand that you join them because you are their ally, and if you do not join them in their war, uh, it'll break the alliance, and it'll tank your diplomatic reliability rating. And if you do participate in the war with them, they will leave you to do all the fighting, almost all the time. <laughs> At a great mask to celebrate Val the Maker, the floor is cleared so that the Phoenix King and Everqueen may dance together. The platitudes and graciousness from the guests are unending, but afterwards many are left wondering who the Phoenix King will bestow the honor of the second dance upon. All eyes are watching, even those of the Everqueen. Okay, uh... Man, this is not... Managing diplomatic relationships at a public ball is not... The Phoenix King does not dance, nobody can be offended. An unconventional move, but a bold one. Everybody would be chill, but it'll cost influence. We definitely need to gain influence, because we're going to be hiring lords soon. And I want to hire uh, mages and stuff soon. So we could tank our trade agreement briefly to get a ton of influence. Promote unity by having the two rivals dance together. We could pay a little bit of influence to get an okay follower. An Illyrian Horsemaster would not be bad in our new army, but I think we really desperately need influence, so I'm going to tank our trade income for a little while. We've lost most of our trade agreements at this point, so this shouldn't be too expensive. Yeah, it's only... I don't even think that was 100 gold per turn that we lost there. So many of our trade partners have been killed, you know. Alright, so we need to sail out to the other side of this reefy area. We don't want to stop in here. If they attack us on the sea, we'll be forced to auto-resolve, but we'll win if we if we get into an auto-resolve battle out here, so I'm not worried about it. Time is of the essence. All right, we can put one more unit on local recruitment with you. Probably we should get some standing infantry, shouldn't we? It's probably a bad idea to have all of our horses, all of our forces, be horse, because who's going to hold guys in place while we shoot at them, right? These guys are 31 melee attack, 27 defense. Yeah, 27 melee defense is very bad. We need somebody to form the core of the line. We'll get a couple units of uh, of spearmen. Only one right this second. The people are resting. All right, three turns until we have enough surplus to upgrade the shrine of Loic, build proper walls behind it, and then upgrade this horse building so that we can get silver helms. Which aren't even that much better at standing and fighting. They're just better shock cavalry. Do high elves not have get in there and stay in there type cavalry? Oh wow, the base charge bonus on Silverhelms is crazy high though. It would be even better if they were in her army. Order must be maintained. Alright, we're tanking the chaos corruption out pretty quickly now. Yep, so we're not going to respond to that. We know about the rebellion. We're not doing the vortex ritual. 
So we can start up Military Advancements 2. Honestly, Swift Sense is so irrelevant for us. Let's just get started on this, because we really, really want some of this stuff now. Now we actually have Illyrian units, uh, Illyrian horse units, so like this stuff will be relevant. This will become relevant as we get Silver Helms. Yeah. And then Monthly Festivals is going to be so good. So now it's 40... Yeah, it's 40 influence to get good mages. So what, is, what does good actually mean? Whatever quality of life is... This. So these guys have bonus spells. Pretty good bonus spells. Glittering Robe is, uh, is not bad. Transmutation of Lead is extremely good. Wow, that really nukes people's uh, ability to cast. And both of these spells have a 50% uh, ability to fight. And both of these spells have a 50% miscast chance that will be reduced to zero by that cool staff that we have. Incendiary. Charge bonus plus 100. Weapon strength plus 100% enables flaming attacks. It's, he's like the bright wizard from uh, from Vermintide. That's interesting. Oh, this is this is just one lore. That's the high lore. There are also life mages and light mages. I think life got nerfed pretty badly, didn't it? Wow, plus 10% research rate, though. Plus 3% tax rate faction-wide? Plus 30% from all buildings in the local province? Wow. Some of these, uh, some of these high-influence mages are very, very good. Yeah, minus 30% uh, construction cost for all buildings. We need to get five more influence. How do we do that? Well, our noble has an action that produces influence, doesn't he? I can't see his real abilities here. So that might be a way. Do we have... Is this still running? It is, okay. Oh no, wait, it's this one, sorry. It's this one, it's the one that gives you plus two influence per turn. So, if we wait until the next invocation of a Surion, we can hire a good mage, or we can just try out our noble's ability. I'm not sure exactly how it works. He just, he just runs up to... That's all I want. I want this. Yeah, he just runs up to places and gains us influence. Alright, we'll try some of that. Especially since... Uh, we're not going to need a 20 stack to deal with the what's left of the scalings. We'll just have him gain influence against each scaling area right before we attack it, I guess. Okay, well, things have uh, things have definitely turned in our favor here for the moment. I think that's going to have to be it for us for today. We have a larger, more difficult problem in our near future. But for now, let's enjoy just riding all over the faces of our inferior enemies. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you're still enjoying the series. Come back next time. We're going to wipe these scalings off the face of the map. And we'll see you then.